Okay, let's see how you did here. So uh, why did the green one have a vertical asymptote um, at three? Yeah, because at three, the function, whoa, what did I do there? The function had a vertical tangent line, and, of course, the slope of a vertical line is, what? Yeah, it does not exist. Okay, uh, let's see if I can get back to you. Ooh, ooh, oh, I think that's where I had it, yeah. Okay, sweet. So <clears throat> the, the first thing that we want to do if we're trying to sketch the derivative is look for any place on the green graph where we know the true value, uh, and that is a zero. So uh, somewhere right in here, which kind of coincided with uh, the inflection value, was the maximum point. That's going to be a local max there, so that's going to be a derivative value of zero. So I'm going to put it, it may be at negative one, we don't know. I'll just put it right there. And now we can analyze the green graph. To the left of that horizontal tangent, the green graph is increasing. So we're going to have positive slopes. So to do that, we'll just maybe draw a line, something like this. And then to the right, that green um, graph is decreasing. Now, as it's decreasing, it's going down to infinity, right? So if my slopes are approaching negative infinity and the y values represent the slopes, um, and increasing positive, decreasing, yeah. It's going to look something like uh, it'll also be approaching infinity, so there'll be another vertical asymptote there. It'll be something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can kind of use your knowledge of, you know, the, the green part there between negative 7 and 3 kind of looks like a parabola, right? And so what would the derivative of a parabola be? A line, right? Um, so we don't know for sure if this is going to be truly linear. Probably not because it's not really a parabola, but that can kind of help you with maybe how you're drawing it. It's probably going to curve a little bit. Um, maybe I have it drawing... Maybe it's going to be like that. Maybe it curves a little bit. But it's going to come down, and then as I get closer and closer to 3, because the green graph is also approaching a vertical tangent. It never gets there. The y values, which represents its slope, also go down. So that's what that piece looks like, and that's f double prime. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. There we go, f double prime. And on the other side, um, what would that look like? Well, now there's no, like, 0 or anything. But I do know that that little piece is monotonic increasing, right? It's going up. So my slopes should be entirely above the x-axis. So my y values, I'm sorry, that represents slopes, should be above there. And as I come in from the right, my slope, my tangent line, if you want to draw one, is a very steep positive number, right? So that slope could be like positive a million. Well, the y value then that represents the slope is going to be up there at positive a million. As I continue to go to the right, my slopes are still positive, but they're kind of decreasing a little bit, right? Kind of decreasing a little bit. So they're going to come down and decrease. Still positive, but get smaller. And then what's going to happen? Yeah, now the slopes start getting bigger again. So um, that's going to be right there to where it turns up, okay? And that makes sense because that uh, then would be its derivative and it changes from negative to positive. And that would be a local min. Now, how far down does it go before it turns around? I don't think it gets all the way down to zero, do you? Because if it were to, oops, I raised too much. If it got down to zero, then that green graph that we had there, um, it would have actually turned horizontal like x cubed. I didn't quite draw it like that. I kind of drew it just coming through maybe at a slope of 1. Okay. So anyway, there it is. That would be a possible graph of F double prime. I'll make this darker. All right. So that's going forward. You analyze the slopes, look for zeros, and then analyze in between there. Um, this one on part uh, B, we're going backwards now. And so going backwards, that's the one that we've already done on the previous two examples in the previous section, or the last two examples. Uh, this is now f prime, and we want to start uh, sketching f. So this represents the derivative of some function, f prime. Okay, now you're going to be given a starting value for this one. 
Uh, in the past, I gave you zero, zero. This one, we're saying that we're starting at negative seven, zero. So that's kind of nice. It's, it's the leftmost point. I have seen them a couple of times not give you like a left justified point, but give you like some point randomly in the middle. So if that's the case, start there and, and construct the graph going to one side and then just construct the graph going back to the other side. But it's kind of nice when you start on one side. Okay, so this one now is the one I think that's a little bit easier maybe because you're analyzing the Y values as slopes and the slope values as curvature, right? So anytime, again, the slope changes signs or the y values change signs, you've got to reassess, and it's going to be one of those quarter arcs of a circle. So from negative 7 to negative 5, if this is the derivative, we have positive y values, so that's increasing, and negative slope, that's concave down, right? So positive negative, that's how we did it yesterday, positive negative, that's y value slopes, means increasing concave down. So increasing concave down, boom. And notice uh, we do want to, at 5, or at negative 5 to, to negative 3, it's now negative negative. Negative y value is decreasing. So negative negative is decreasing concave down to somewhere. Uh, maybe it crosses. Who knows? And then from negative 3 to negative 1, we have negative positive. Negative y value is positive slopes. That means decreasing concave up. There we go. And then from negative 1 to 2, uh, positive, positive, right? Hashtag Rachel's challenge, positive, positive. We've got uh, increasing then, concave up. Increasing, concave up. Increasing, concave up. Until I get to 2. I don't know where the y value is, but when I get to 2, I'm going to stop. And then we got that little smidgen right there from 2 to 3. That's still positive y values. Let me erase that. We don't need all that anymore. We have positive y values and now negative slopes. So that's going to be increasing concave down, increasing cost, so up till 3. And then from 3 to 5, positive y values, negative slopes. So that's going to be increasing concave, I'm sorry, positive increasing concave down still, right? Increasing concave down, yeah. Um, increasing concave down. Yeah, so what's, what's actually happening there where we had the vertical tangent? That's pretty hard to say because if this is F prime, that slope might be or have a Y value of 5. So the slope there could be 5. All right. And now from 5 to 7, we still have positive and positive. So that's increasing concave up. So increasing concave up, boom, to there. So that's the one maybe that uh, feels a little better. It's more systematic. <clears throat> that would be a possible graph of F. Would it be possible in this case to determine where that function has an absolute max, or f has an absolute max? The only possibilities would be this local max over here or the right endpoint. Can we kind of infer that the right endpoint is going to end up being higher than the local max value? I think, I think there's enough there to decide yes, because notice it, it goes up for a span of two units, from negative 7 to negative 5. The fastest at which it goes up is about right here, off the y-axis. And then it goes down from negative 5 to negative 1. Well, that's a little bit longer span, 1, 2, 3, 4, instead of 2, but maybe it doesn't go down quite as fast, because it doesn't hit the y-axis as much. So it goes down for a little longer. So that's, that's actually kind of okay. And then what's happening from negative 1 all the way to 7? That's a span of 8 units where it's monotonic increasing. And notice this guy right here. That is the biggest y value on the graph of f prime. So not only then from there is it going up for a very long interval, but it's going up at a much faster rate than um, where it ever went down. So... Later on, we're going to use that more definitively. We're going to calculate the area of that region, and we're going to compare it to the area of that region. And then we're going to find the area of this region. And this is going to end up being positive because it's above. This is going to end up being negative value because it's below, and this is positive. And basically, if you add up those three numbers and you end up with a positive number, what does that tell you? That tells you that the right endpoint is higher. 
okay? You'll be able to quantify that. But that's, that's integration. Okay, um, let's do one more here because I feel like you'll need practice with it. Um, I'm going to erase the graph of F. And um, so let me just, let me add it right here. Let's do this. We don't want to use the same graph. Do we have another one? No, let's let's just let's just move down. Let's just move down. I actually have more more examples down here. Okay, um, so that that concludes example three. So moving on to four. It says for each of the following graphs of f prime, sketch a possible graph of both f and f. That should say f double prime. That should be f double prime. So we're starting kind of in the middle. We want to sketch one going forward and one going backwards. So I'll label this as F prime. Go ahead and pick a flavor. Some of y'all have created some really neat custom flavors. Go ahead and sketch the graph of F uh, double prime first. That's the one I was going to give you an extra example of. Sketch the derivative of that function. If you compare them to your buddies, you should have common themes and maybe at least one shared point. Eh, not bad. Okay, cool. Let's see how you did. So even though it's F prime, we're trying to sketch F double prime. So we're going to sketch its derivative. So we're going to analyze the slopes of this graph and plot those values as y values at the same x value. So again, the first thing you might want to do is figure out where you have any horizontal tangent lines. Well, there's an obvious one right there. I will call it, uh, well, right here. How about that? So that's an x-intercept, okay? And uh, there's another local max, but the derivative there is undefined. So that's going to be interesting. We're going to have to have some either vertical tangent or maybe a, a jump or something or a hole. We don't know. Now, again, you can kind of help yourself here. This little piece here, that smiling piece, looks kind of like a parabola, right? And so the derivative of a parabola would be a linear function. So maybe it's going to be straight line or maybe kind of curvy and not perfectly straight. To the left of that x value, that function is decreasing. So we're going to have negative values. Now, if you want to look at the slopes, you can kind of also draw them here. That slope might be, kind of give it a value. That might be like a negative 3. And then as you move closer this way, it's getting flatter. So that might be like a negative 1. And that might be, of course, or it is, of course, a 0. So that can help you, right? It's like plotting points. So negative 3 and then negative 1, blah, blah, blah. So maybe we'll just draw it as a straight line, okay? And I guess I should not draw it past that point. So that's where it would start. Now, technically, if we're looking on a closed interval, Technically, what would be the value of the derivative at the left endpoint here? Assuming it doesn't keep going. What's the derivative at an endpoint? D and E, right? So really, that one should be an open circle there. Um, open circle. If you didn't have that, I get that. But um, this one didn't really say it's defined on a, on a possible interval. But the fact that it's a solid dot and not drawn past there would tell me that. And then, of course, you can look to the right of that horizontal tangent, and you can see that your slopes go back to like a positive 1, a positive 2, maybe back to a positive 3. And then you can kind of use that to help you. It looks like it's just going to continue on that same track until, boom, we get right there. Okay. Now, I know that I'm not going to put a dot there, 
But do I put an open circle? Do I put a vertical tangent? It kind of depends what's happening on the other side. Um, what do you notice about this piece, this segment here? The slopes are all, yeah, the slopes are all negative because it's decreasing, and it looks pretty dang linear, doesn't it? And so it would have a constant slope. So what is the slope of that? You can kind of, you can actually calculate it, right? Because it's linear. So from one point to another down here, you're going to go down uh, three and right uh, two. So that would be negative three halves or negative 1.5. So usually it's not marked on there. So as long as you know it's a negative value, um, we'll just draw it like this. I'm going to put an open circle there, and now I'm going to put an open circle there. And then I'll just draw a constant slope would be a constant y value. It's going to cruise all the way across. And then, of course, because there's a solid dot on the end there, we'll assume that's the right endpoint. What's the derivative at any endpoint? D and E. So let me see if I can get a horizontal line. Boom, there we go. Ah, I messed it up at the end. Yes? Why is it not on the x-axis? the point where it says the Why is what not on the x-axis? The little horizontal piece? This piece here? Oh, because that, that, those y values would have to represent the slope of the piece that's above it. And what is the slope of the line above it? Let, let's, let's do it this way, right? Let's, let's just kind of say, let's let f prime, let me switch flavors here so it matches up. Let's say that this f prime actually was negative 3 halves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I'm thinking, uh, no, no, my bad. Um, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to come up with an equation. That would be a linear function. We're, we're doing f prime, so that would be like uh, negative 3 halves x plus, and then what would the y-intercept be if we followed it up here? Let's just say it's, uh, I don't know, 7. Who cares? All right? So we're, we're giving ourselves a possible equation for that line segment, yes? Mm -hmm. We're trying to sketch its derivative. So if I have an equation, the second derivative would be, what's the derivative of negative 3 halves x? Negative 3 halves times x to the 0, which is 1, plus 0. So that would be the second derivative. And what does that graph as? That graphs as a horizontal line at negative 3 halves. Now, I know what you're asking here. What would, when would it land on there? If this is the second derivative, if I, oops, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. If I wanted to sketch now the derivative of the second derivative, that's the third derivative, what would the slope of this line segment be on that interval? That would be zero. So that would then put it on the x-axis. And then forevermore, once you hit zero, it's zero. Okay? Yeah, good question. It is, it is, it is challenging, right? You've got to keep everything straight. Because uh, we're starting with f prime going forward, and usually when f prime, we're already considering it as a derivative, not a starting point. Okay, which is kind of why going backwards is easier. Okay, um, so if you got something like that, maybe uh, except for the endpoints, you're in good shape. Okay, um, let's go backwards now. Going backwards, I'll use green. We'll do this as f. <clears throat> so now we're just looking on on separate intervals here. So um, from one to two. We have positive, negative. I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, let's, let's, they didn't give us a starting point. Let's just start right here, if you don't mind. We'll just call that 1, 1. Let's start at 1, 1. <clears throat> and notice I have to have a solid dot there because now I'm treating that as the slope, and the slope there is 3. Okay, that's what the y value is. Um, so that's going to be a positive y value, so it's going to be increasing, and it's a negative slope, so concave down. Increasing concave down is going to look something like that. Uh, on the next interval, it's positive, positive, so that's going to be uh, increasing concave up, up into there. Now, do I put another open circle here? No, because the cusp has a derivative that doesn't exist, but the y value is also 3. So right there, I have to have it defined. And then to the left, I have positive y values and negative slopes. 
So positive negative means increasing concave down, increasing concave down. So it's going to look something like that all the way to the end. There you go. So that would be a possible graph. Now, if you had not been given a starting point, this graph here, as long as the x behavior is the same, depending on the starting y value that you're given, this is what it would look like. It could be moved up or down anywhere. Because notice when you take the slopes of that, it doesn't, it doesn't affect it, right? They're parallel. All those tangent lines are parallel. So that's, that's the only difference. When you're going backwards, you're going to be given a starting value. I'll just... I'll drop it in right there. Okay. All right. So it takes a little practice. Maybe you want to practice on your own. I get that. Without the sound of my voice there talking you through it, I get that too. My wife gets that a lot. Okay. Um, okay. Got it. All right. Um, how about this one? You go. Do both of them. This one, remember, we're starting as F prime. Uh, I'm not going to even talk you through it. I'm just going to do it with you, and 